Good day, it's Mike from Flex Radio, and I want to talk to you about one of the cool features of Slice Master you may not have used. Now, I'm sure a number of you use Slice Master to start your digital programs, such as uh, WSJT or JDDX or uh, so on and so on. But have you ever looked into what you can do with the DX clusters and how you can incorporate what you see here on the HF uh, at your own station versus what you get from your DX clusters uh, and have you ever used an aggregator? Now, some logbooks will connect to multiple DX clusters at the same time. Uh, I happen to use Ham Radio Deluxe. I rather like it for its workflow. But one of the things it doesn't do is connect to multiple clusters at the same time. So let's look how we can leverage that and all the features that come with it. Uh, this, um, if you flip over to the three dots here, you'll see that uh, spot sources. This is DX cluster sources, and you can specify up to four. And okay, that's great. This is going to combine all the DX tiers or all the cluster spots here. But how do I make use of that? Because it actually is going to combine. Uh, in my case, I'm using V7CC and my own cluster VA3MW. Uh, plus, you know what? All these are spots. They are to me. And they're important that my logbook knows anything popping up here uh, correlates with my logbook and maybe I need it because it's I'm doing a work doll, whatever uh, type of thing. So that's uh, very powerful uh, if you're hunting and, and DXing that way. And sure, you can either use other tools like um, slight, um, Grid Tracker or you can use JTDX by itself. Uh, I really don't care about modes, but I care about countries. So that's what's important to me. So... Notice this here, it says Telnet, Enable Aggregation Server. Uh, okay, well, what's that? Now, if you've never gone and looked at the manual, which is fairly good online, um, it is a DX cluster server, and you can point your logbook to it. And every logbook that uses DX clusters can specify its own DX cluster by entering um, an IP address or a name and a port. And we're going to demonstrate that here just using PuTTY, which is a simple Telnet program 127.0.01 means connect to a computer uh, IP address that specific number means local host or this computer we're using and 7234 well look at that 7234 matches this 7234 and you can change that if you need to but you shouldn't so uh, let, let's uh, connect to this and it says, uh, you know, VA3, MW, it popped up like a cluster. You've maybe never seen this sort of screen. But uh, what we're going to have a look at is you'll see here, if we look closely at this screen, we see these first four spots say VA3, MW, slash A. What the heck's that? How did I spot those? Well, they came from WSJT or JTDX. The slash A actually means slice A. If I had multiple slices open, I'd have a B, C, D, depending on your model of radio. And yet these other spots came in, you know, DX from OE1 uh, MOJ uh, type of thing. They're coming in from, in my case, V7 um, Charlie Charlie, because it gets spots from all over the world. And uh, I have my cluster limited so that it only shows spots that originate in CQ zones 2, 3, and 5, which is mostly the northeast of the United States. All right, so this is, this is really helpful. Now what you do is you tell your logging program, instead of PuTTY, to connect to uh, 127.0.0.1 and uh, port, uh, uh, what did we say it was, 7234. And you can save it permanently, and I just call it DX cluster. Slice Master. And now when I look at my, my logging program on another screen here, I can see what's important to me or not important to me. And uh, so that I find that incredibly helpful. And uh, hopefully you will too. This is Mike, VA3MW. I hope that helps you out. 73, have a good day. Great DX.